Hey everyone, Sarah here with SewingPartsOnline.com and today we are going to go over how to sew some of the more difficult fabric like denim and chiffon and fleece. So first, let's start off with denim. Here's the thing, I hate to say it, but the success with sewing denim is related to the quality of your machine. With home sewing machines, you're better off just sticking with a lightweight to medium weight denim. Heavy denim is more for the industrial sewing department. You need to pre-wash your fabric, and since the edges fray like crazy, you might want to do a quick zigzag around those raw edges before throwing them in the wash. Many people prefer to finish the raw edges of their cut out pattern pieces before sewing any of the pieces together. That way, it's one less thing you have to think about. A zigzag stitch or an overlock stitch will do. You want to use a denim slash jean needle or at least a hundred size universal needle. You can use regular all-purpose polyester thread, though make sure it is good quality, or you can use heavy-duty thread to make your seams. Heavy-duty gold top stitching thread is great for recreating those classic jean seams. We usually use denim for jeans and items that will get a good bit of wear and tear, which is why a flat felled seam is popular with denim. A flat felled seam is made by sewing the wrong sides together, pressing to one side. Now trim one flap down really small, maybe like a quarter of an inch is good or even an eighth of an inch. Then flip over the other flap to meet that cut flap. The edges should butt up together. When ironing, a hot setting and a steam setting are great. Then press it all to one side. Now top stitch along that edge. With denim, it's best to sew slowly and steadily. Go too fast and your stitches are gonna get a little wonky. The big problem people have with sewing denim is the bulk of the seams. Now, I really like to use my walking foot when sewing denim to keep the fabric from shifting around and that way I don't have to pin as much, but you certainly don't have to, especially if you have great feed dogs in your machine already. You can reduce the bulk by clipping into the seam allowance and removing unnecessary multiple layers, or you can use a jean jig, which I recommend because it's easier. However, you can get by without a jean jig, and if you're looking to save a little money, let me show you how. Grab your point turner, and you can use the end of that to level out the back of your presser foot as it tilts upward over the bulky area. Then, as it comes down over top of the crossing seams, I'll use the point turner again to level out the front of my presser foot, just as I did to the back until my presser foot is back on level area and not crossing over any seams anymore. Many times with older repurposed jeans, you're getting that extra heavy, good old fashioned denim fabric. In that case, grab a hammer, it's time to get tough. Go to a flat surface and bang away at the seams. It breaks down the fibers, making it easier to pass the needle through. Voila, easy peasy. Fleece is actually pretty easy to sew. It's really just the bulk that becomes problematic. Remember all those tips we gave you for sewing denim? Well, many of them translate to fleece. Use a ballpoint needle and polyester thread. Again, I really, really recommend a walking foot because fleece loves to shift around. If you don't have a walking foot, just pin like crazy. Pin, pin, pin. If you're sewing four or more layers, say you're sewing over multiple seams that intersect, you're going to have to hand baste because it shifts like crazy and creates weak spots that no amount of pinning is going to help. Just like jeans, you'll have to decrease the tension and use a slightly longer stitch length to accommodate the thickness. Fleece won't fray, so no need to finish the raw edges unless you want to. Cut your patterns according to the nap diagram in your little pattern guide. Also, finger pressing is good enough, no need to go crazy with the iron. The trick to sewing vinyl, faux leather, oil cloth, and laminate fabric is having the right presser foot and needle, as well as something to hold the fabric together, like these wonder clips, as pins will leave permanent unsightly holes in the fabric. If you don't have wonder clips, no worries, use bobby pins or hair clips. And really, that's pretty much all you need. It's actually very simple. Now you can do a flat felled seam again because of its strength, but you don't have to as the edges won't fray. 
You need a leather needle or a 116 universal needle and either a walking foot, Teflon foot, or roller foot. Those are really the tricks for sewing vinyl. It's really simple as long as you have the special needle, the special clips, and the right foot. And you will want to lower the tension as well as elongate the stitch. There is no need to iron, just finger press or press using a point turner. Heavy duty thread is great, but you can also get by with all purpose polyester thread. I want to do an honorable mention with faux fur. The trick to sewing faux fur is one, using a universal size 90 needle or 100 needle, depending how thick the hide backing of your fabric is and using a walking foot. If you do that, you are set. The big tip is all in the cutting. You trace the patterns on the backing, but you don't really cut the fabric, you slice it. I just kind of etch away at the backing until I can really pull those hairs apart. See how I get a more authentic edge? I don't want a straight cut edge that looks like, you know, my fur fabric just got a bad bowl cut. I want something that resembles real fur and how it drapes down. If you ever plan to wash the final project, say a table runner, then you need to pre-wash the fabric before cutting it. Let it hang dry and then press out the creases while it's just a tad damp. Burlap is loosely woven and needs to be put on grain by removing a fiber and cutting, just like we did in the previous videos. Most fabric shops will do this while they're actually cutting the burlap for you. Burlap will dull your needles and your scissors quickly, so make sure you're using some fairly old scissors when you're cutting your burlap projects. As burlap is a hot fraying mess, you'll have to approach cutting shapes a little differently. So let's say I wanted to cut out a heart shape applique. Let's say I'm making like a heart pillow or something. I would stitch a short straight stitch or zigzag stitch around my tracing to secure those fabric in place before I do the cutting. After I cut, it's less likely to fray. Many people use some kind of backing when sewing burlap, like muslin works very well as it helps to stabilize the seams and kind of act like a buffer. It helps to shape the project. Also fusible interfacing works very, very well. It's recommended to add an extra stitch in the seam allowance as an extra safety against fraying, even if you stabilize the seam first. So these very sheer and very lightweight, silky, slinky fabrics all follow many of the same rules. For instance, if you can sew chiffon, then you can sew organza and charmeuse and tulle. You can sew pretty much anything. The first step is to pray and accept that learning to sew chiffon is going to be a rough journey, but in the end, it is so worth it. Especially if you have a little girl in your life who is begging to be Elsa for Halloween. Hand wash your fabric when you get home. Then after it's dry, pull those little fibers to find the grain as we did in previous episodes. Just note, even after you've found the perfect grain, it doesn't seem like it's on grain. See, chiffon is tricky and it's a woven that kind of shifts around almost like a knit. So to stabilize it, you are going to starch, starch and starch some more, but make sure you use quality starch like best press. See, you'll be hand washing the garment again before you even wear it. So that will bring back that fluid characteristic that we love so much. When it's time to cut, you'll sandwich the fabric between two pieces of tissue paper. Tissue paper is commonly used in the fashion industry and it can be bought on large rolls. Chiffon is done in single layer cutting. So any pattern with a center fold will have to be traced and flipped over and traced again instead of being folded. Yes, this is going to dull your fabric scissors a little faster, but trust me, this is the way to do it. You want to prevent as much shifting as possible, so use pattern weights. After I cut my pieces, before I do any construction, I like to do a long stay stitch a quarter of an inch away from all the edges. It just makes me feel more secure that I'm not going to warp the fabric as I'm pinning everything together. And speaking of pinning, you're going to want to use fine pins like bridal pins because any needle hole is going to be very obvious and compromise the fabric strength. It's best to only pin within the seam allowance and to hand base the seams first so that you are positive that's where you want the seam. Ripping out seams risks tears and it looks like a big hot mess. Also, make sure your hand sewing needle is meant for fine fabric. 
When it's time to sew, a walking foot and straight stitch needle plate are great, but you can certainly get by without them. A straight stitch needle plate prevents the fabric from being shoved down to that needle plate at the start of your seam. What I like to do is manually turn my hand wheel to create a thread tail through the fabric. Then I grab the thread tail and hold it behind the presser foot and I slightly pull on it as I sew. That way it's going to keep it from being pushed down into the needle plate. Also, if you're still having trouble or notice any puckering, tissue paper on top of the fabric and underneath the fabric as you sew is known to be very helpful. Silk thread is recommended, though I have used polyester and rayon successfully. Your sewing needle should be a sharp or universal. Start out with a size 70. It's common to see chiffon finished with a French seam, though other methods like sergers can also be used. To make a French seam with a 5 8 inch seam allowance, as is common in garment construction, you would sew all of your pieces with wrong sides together and by using a quarter inch seam allowance. Now I know this sounds wrong, but eventually we'll get to 5 8 of an inch. You'll trim the seam allowance in half to approximately 1 8 of an inch. Grab your iron and set the seam. Setting the seam is basically pressing over top the stitches as you sew. It kind of melds them together. Now, press the seam allowance to one side, being careful not to catch any additional fabric into that seam. Now fold it right sides together along that fold. Manipulate with your fingers as much as you can. I know this is a really small seam and you're basically using invisible fabric, but the more you work it, the better it'll look. And press again. Lastly, we'll sew 3 eighths of an inch away from that new folded edge. Your pattern will likely recommend areas that need to be stay stitched, like curves and armholes. Do not skip this step, it's very important, and continue to set those seams as you go. For hemming, a rolled narrow hem is great. I prefer using my rolled hem foot, and we do have a video on how to use this. I'll leave the link in the description section below. I like the rolled hem foot because it gives me a nice, precise, narrow, narrow hem. If you don't have a rolled hem foot, that's okay. You can turn the hem under an eighth of an inch twice and sew. It's a little harder, make sure you pin carefully and I really recommend actually hand basting these and before you go to the machine and stitch them in. The benefit of hand basting is you can finish off the hem with a nice top stitch and then remove the hand basting stitches. I recommend testing your stitch tension and length on a scrap piece of chiffon first. If you experience puckering, try to reduce your stitch length. Your tension will be on the higher side, but the exact number will vary amongst machines. Testing first is always a good practice anyways. Now that you know all the tips and tricks, go out there and experiment with different kinds of fabric and have some fun. If you have any comments or questions, be sure to leave them in the comment section below or come and check us out on sewingpartsonline.com, on Facebook at facebook.com slash sewingpartsonline, Twitter at sewingparts, Google Plus, Instagram, Pinterest, and be sure to subscribe by hitting that button below for next week's sewing video.